So this week in Jillian Rose's chapter on visual methodologies, she writes about how an image is situated in a relational experience, that an image is not purely representational of what's being photographed, but in taking and viewing a photograph, this photo comes to matter in relation to others. Its composition is based on the relations of art, artist, viewer, and context, and is not a static representation of something existing in isolation. So in this way, meaning is made at the sites of production, image, and audience. That meaning is not something pre-existing the moments of interactions, where the viewer engages with the photo and contextual experience. So in this way, the technological, compositional, and social aspects are what creates the performance and what makes the image and research livable. So Rose's chapter speaks to the experience of viewing a photo, and she draws on Haraway in conceptualizing seeing beyond the traditional sense of the sense, disrupting the capitalist image that flattens the depth of time and space into something surface, something palatable, easily digested, and quickly consumed and understood. In reading uh, this week, I was reminded of billboard ads of images in a catalog that perhaps present a quick representation of something that sort of cuts it off from its relational complexities. Um, so the object photographed is easily appropriated and consumed as a static receivable truth. The meaning is intended to be universal and exists in an isolation. So this week's readings attend to the multiplicities at play in the experience of taking and viewing visual documentation. Rose's chapter specifically reminds me of Bartha's notion of the death of the author, where the idea of authorship needs to be really rethought. If text, image, and art are considered as a meeting place of multiple actors, beyond the individual self, this paints a very different image of the, author, of the author as her work is not done in isolation, nor does it solely belong to her. Bartha is in this way argued that this signals the death of the author. Um, each word we write comes with a history attached. Each thought, I think, is informed by a long history of thought that came before me. So acts of making are never done in isolation. So another thing that emerged for me this week in the readings is that if we can consider this relational quality, not only in the making of a piece of work, but also in its performance, we can consider how an experience of viewing this piece is intimately informed with multiple components beyond the human eye. So this performance is enacted with place, time, material, etc. All of the components that come together in a moment of viewing. Yet, when we think about the act of making and viewing as relational, this does not mean that there are no accountabilities to what we think or share, but rather that our ways of seeing actually do come from somewhere and that we are implicated in this act of seeing as we actively interpret the essence of something and try to elucidate this essence by choosing a particular aspect to look at and representing it in ways which invite multiple interpretations. So to give what Eck and Winter call a subjective feel whose meaning may not be fully capturable. So in our readings of the charcoal and chapter, uh, the charcoal chapter in Encounters with Materials this week, we can see how the authors here attune to these intersections or meeting places by thinking in an encounter, attuning to components of a moment and how they come together in difference not to just assume the other into the same by saying that we're paying attention, um, noticing and how we understand it, but to attend to its conceptual boundaries, the thingness and the essence and its unknowability, thinking with what this encounter calls into motion and what it provokes rather than saying that this is what happened and we now name it and define it. So O'Sullivan writes, an encounter operates as a rupture in our habitual modes of being and thus in our habitual subjectivities. And every encounter produces a cut or a crack that interjects and calls us to think otherwise. So encounters enact a pulse that call on us to act, to respond and to think. And this feeling of being inside an experience that propels us somewhere um, 
expands our capacity for thought and action, as Dahlberg would say. Um, so how might you think in your inquiry, um, how might you think of your inquiry, not only as a series of encounters, but also as an encounter you are creating, something that you are provoking for others to engage with that might provoke them to think otherwise. So in your portfolio entry this week, in portfolio entry four, um, we'll be engaging with an exercise in using photography as a method of seeing and of inquiry. So you should try to engage with the ideas and suggestions discussed this week as you take photos. So the processes of taking photos and the resulting photographs will be expressions of figuring something out rather than representations of something that's already known. So thinking about how you can use your camera to explore something that you might not fully already understand. So this is very much a poetic research exercise. So Van Manen writes that phenomenological research is a poeticizing activity that strives to use a language that sings or reverberates the world. Carl Lego also writes that poetry pushes at edges into spaces where language refuses clarity. So how might photography help us to open up research in poetic ways and attend to experiences um, that can't quite be articulated in words? So using your camera, investigate a landscape. So this could be neutral, or sorry, this could be natural or urban, and compose a series of photos that explores the poetics of this place. Try to explore different points of view, look at details, attend to unlikely instances of beauty or unconventional views, and play with juxtaposition. So try to compose your photos so that they express some of the poetry of this place. Use the same platform as you did in your previous uh, portfolios. And this should be an online platform, preferably a website. Compose a gallery series of five to seven of your most expressive photos and write one descriptive paragraph or a poem to accompany your photos. So your paragraph or poem should give insight into your lived experience of the place. So post a link to this portfolio entry for by Friday at 11.55 p.m. and then respond to one other entry by Sunday at 11.55. So in your response, as you reflect on others' portfolio assignments this week, pay particular attention to what do the images do? What sense do you make of the images? What presents itself and what do you see? So just touching quickly on the lived experience as you begin to think about your inquiry assignments, the starting point of a phenomenological research inquiry is largely a matter of identifying what it is that deeply interests you um, and of identifying this interest as a true phenomenon. So that is as an experience that's lived through. Um, orient yourself to this experience. This implies a vantage point or a particular interest. So what is the orientation or what, interest, what interest will you choose to orient toward? As I said before, there's so much that happens in one moment that when we're taking a phenomenological um, lens, we need to choose one aspect of this moment and really delve deeply into that. Van Manen also writes that it is not enough to simply recall experiences. I must recall the experience in such a way that the essential aspects, the meaning structures of this experience as lived through are brought back in such a way that we can recognize this description as a possible experience, which means a possible interpretation of, this, of that experience. So this requires inventive ways of telling beyond mere description or beyond a description of exactly what happened. This requires a poetic thought and an aesthetic attention. So in your inquiry projects, the goal is not a comparison or a measurement. So for example, this is not um, about saying what this person describes beauty as and compare it to what another person describes beauty as. Um, we're actively trying to blur the illusion of a binary. If you choose to juxtapose an idea, that's completely fine, but make sure that you do this in a way that's nuanced and provokes a disturbance um, in either way, um, in a way of thinking in terms of a binary. 
Um, so focus uh, not on what people think about the topic, but rather give insight into the lived experience of it. So it is not a series of interviews, of gathering information, or a search for an explanation or an answer. This is very much processual in nature, um, and it's a search for understanding and mean meaningfulness. So you'll be using rich description as a starting point to enter into your inquiry. So in, the intent here is to draw out and compose themes, generative ideas, and insight into the essential nature of an experience. And I encourage you to look at the 473 course assignments document, as well as the rubrics doc to get a better sense of um, what we're looking for in these projects. And again, if you have any um, questions or ideas that you'd like to run by me for your inquiry assignment, please do send me a message and we can chat about that. So yeah, I think that's it for now. Have a great week, everybody.